These smartwatches for kids might seem like a good idea, but what about the kids' right to privacy? And how secure are they really? We're about to find out. Good to see you, sir. Good to see you. Yeah. So Harrison, you've been looking at the security of these smartwatches. How easy was it to circumvent them? It was a lot easier than we expected. Uh, they were missing a lot of uh, standard best practices that you would expect to see on, on these types of devices. And as a result, you know, we had a, we had a lot of security findings. In what ways can a person or an attacker get access to these watches without actually having them in their hand? Right, so an attacker would need a unique identifier uh, for the watch or an IMEI, and you use that as part of the registration process. I type in the verification code that I have, I forward the request along back to the server, and now I've associated uh, Finn's watch with a new account that it didn't originally have access. And this IMEI number is something that you could also find online. This is not, you don't need to have access to the watch to get this number. No, absolutely. So you, don't need, uh, you do not need physical access to the watch uh, to get this number. This is just one, one of the methods that we've identified. In the research of these smartwatches, what were the most surprising findings? We identified that there's uh, the possibility to use these device, devices as a, as a spy device without the kid ever having to um, activate any functions on the watch or even being aware that something's happening. So I'm just going to send the text message here. It'll, uh, it'll automatically call me back. Uh, I can press answer on my phone here. And, uh... and am I talking back to you now? One of the key functions of these watches is parents can track their kids. On my way here, I wore all of these watches on my arm. Uh, what can an attacker do with this information? Yeah, so an attacker uh, would have access to all of the location history that would be stored in that, in that parent's app. We also identified uh, some other problems with location history where an attacker can manipulate where the location of the watch looks to be in the app. Here I can see all the location history. Uh, yeah, this, is most, this, is, this was my walk here, actually. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I can see the exact time that you were at this location. Wow. Right, so with the attack that we've done here, um, we've changed the location data that was sent from the watch uh, between the watch and, and Gator server. So we make it look as if the watch is in London, while in reality it's, uh, it's sitting here with us. So these smartwatches have an emergency SOS button. Did you find any issues with it? Uh, we did identify some problems with the emergency functionality. Uh, so normally uh, a, a child could press the emergency button and it would uh, initiate a phone call back to the parents. Um, but an attacker with control over the app could change the phone numbers that are supposed to be called, uh, or they could just delete them entirely. Okay, now the S has showed up, so it should have activated the SOS function. Okay, so, so now it's uh, calling back to my phone. Yep. So you've taken over, you're now a person who should not have access to this phone. Right. Uh, you have um, put in a different phone number than the parent's phone. These smartwatches collect a lot of sensitive information about children. Is it stored safely? Not as safely as you might think. On, on some of the watches, the communication was not encrypted. Uh, so anybody uh, sitting on the network could see that information passing back and forth. Some of the servers don't protect the information uh, the way it should be. Uh, with one of the watches, it was actually possible to um, return data for other users and, and see location information about, uh, about other people. As we have just seen, these watches are clearly not safe for children. And also, they violate the children's right to privacy. Until these issues have been resolved, they should be removed from the shelves. And in the long term, we need better rules to protect children and grown-ups alike from unsafe and privacy-violating products.